Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a special event this evening marking the one-year anniversary of Morocco and Israel establishing full diplomatic relations, which is being held at Tel Aviv University. Let's go there now and join our Middle East correspondent, Ariel Osorin. And Ariel, tell us about that event and what you've been hearing there. Well, Kalev, uh, the event began with a lovely spread of Moroccan food, and inside, after the uh, the an national anthems of the three countries, Morocco, U.S., and Israel, because, a reminder, this is a trilateral agreement. The United States mediated this agreement. They're also, you know, the what they rewarded the, the Moroccans with, the recognition of the Western Sahara. All this is part of one big package. And afterwards, we heard uh, a bunch of speeches from different delegates. The keynote speaker was the uh, head of the Moroccan liaison office here in Tel Aviv, Abdurrahim Bayoud. He uh, said that what set the ground for the resuming these relations were the tight connection between uh, the court of King Mohammed VI and the Jewish community in Morocco. Uh, he also said, and, and, and this was interesting, that he hoped Hopes, uh, that Morocco hopes that resuming ties with Israel will bring peace to the region. But, and this is important, he said that it also should be based on a true peace process with the Palestinians. And so I think that will be one of the next talking points uh, between the two countries as the relations continue to strengthen and get warmer after a year marking a year today uh, after renewing them. Right, and in fact, oh, we just had a guest, an analyst from Morocco, actually making that in point that the Moroccans do want to be involved in the peace process. But Ariel, you also stressed the security component of Israel and Morocco, part of that bigger alliance against work against more, let's say, extreme aggressive forces uh, in the region. And he mentioned Iran specifically. <laughs> The specific talks where no other countries were, were, were mentioned, and even though the, one of the big deals, perhaps the biggest deal signed between Rabat and Jerusalem over the past year was the Memorandum of Understanding on the security issues, there's also been a bunch of other uh, agreements in agriculture, high tech. Uh, the representative here from Tel Aviv University said that they'll begin awarding scholarships to Moroccan students to come here in Israel. And so I think besides beyond the security cooperation, which is clearly there and was pretty much laid the groundwork right. uh, throughout the past decades, even when there weren't official diplomatic right. relations, I think what both countries want to see is a tighter relationship on all fronts, not all just right. security. Ariel Osteran, looks like a nice event. Thank you for joining us. And still to come on this special broadcast, we'll hear about the potential for cultural cooperation between Morocco and Israel, and speak with a young Moroccan artist whose work combines both her Muslim and Jewish heritage. Stay with us. By midnight tonight, thieves will have stolen 2,400 vehicles across the U.S. today. So when you buy your next car, ask your dealer for Recover. With Recover, you'll always be able to find a forgotten parking spot or know if your car gets towed or moved without your permission. And most importantly, you'll be able to easily share your car's location with police so they can recover it for you. Stay in control and protect what's yours. Ask your dealer for Recover today. Esta semana en News 24, jóvenes israelíes de la organización Heroes for Life viajaron a Panamá para ayudar en la renovación de escuelas. Me suena la película de Josie Grimbohu, un artista multidisciplinario que presenta su primer film en Israel. 
La Navidad ya está con nosotros. Nos visita una voluntaria de Christians Friends of Israel para contarnos sobre sus actividades y proyectos. News 24, el magazine semanal español de iTunes for News. Welcome back to this special edition on I-24 News, marking the one-year anniversary of uh, Morocco joining the Abraham Accords and beginning the establishment of full diplomatic relations with Israel. Now, long before the Abraham Accords, Morocco and Israel shared a rich cultural history together, mainly via the Moroccan Jewish community that now numbers only a few thousand there, but at its peak numbered in the hundreds of thousands and whose descendants in Israel and elsewhere can be counted in the millions. Now, the fusion of Moroccan and Jewish culture has found expression in everything from cuisine to song to religious liturgy, and also in the work of the young Moroccan artist Shama Mishtali, whose groundbreaking calligraphy art combines elements of her Muslim background and some Jewish ancestry. Some of that, you can see, is now on display at a joint exhibit in Jerusalem with the Israeli artist Lee Noor Mizrahi Kohn. And Shama Mishtali joins us now uh, uh, from uh, New York. She is also the founder of Moors and Saints, we should say. Uh, uh, Shama, let's talk about how the, on a, uh, briefly, on a personal level, the opportunities that the signing of the Abraham Accords and the beginning of the development of relations just impacted on you as an artist. Thank you for having me back, Kalev. Um, so as an artist, I have to say that the Accords have tremendously facilitated travel for me to Israel. Uh, as a Moroccan artist based in Dubai, having the possibility of travel through direct flights from the United Arab Emirates or from Morocco, even in the middle of a pandemic, has allowed me to go to Israel for over for three times now. And I also hold now a multi-entry visa to Israel. Previously, when my work was exhibited in Jerusalem, because I was based in Dubai, I actually could not attend the Jerusalem Biennale where my art, um, where my artwork was exhibited. So um, that's the number one tremendous advantage. Um, and then because I've been into the country a few times already, I've been able to um, meet artists and like-minded individuals and cultural entrepreneurs um, in, in, in this, that have been working in this space of Muslim-Jewish dialogue and interfaith relations. I've also co-curated this year and participated in two exhibitions, Maktoub, which you've shown, and um, an exhibition with Lenore Mizrahi Cohen at um, a different space in Jerusalem uh, called Studio Michelach. And I've been able to really kind of build on synergies that already existed, uh, whether within Israel with the Mizrahi and the Moroccan Jewish community uh, or in Morocco and new synergies that are being created in Bahrain and the UAE and to uh, foster more cultural dialogue, advanced ties from sort of a people to people perspective and really weave a social fabric in society that can ensure that these peace deals actually last and are sustainable. Right. Now, you uh, let's look a little outward now. You work primarily in the visual plastic arts. Where do you see the potential elsewhere for cooperation, for those synergies, but for other uh, Israeli and Moroccan artists? In what fields? So there is so much potential. I have to say that in the case of Morocco, there have always been cultural initiatives and cooperation uh, initiatives between Israel and Morocco, even in times when diplomatic and political uh, relations were strained. Um, and so in a way, it just kind of, this allows us, this new environment allows us to uh, showcase those cultural initiatives, expand them, scale them um, in much, much bigger scale than before. 
And in terms of what's being developed right now, I'm actually personally working on a few initiatives with Morocco, uh, one of which will include a, an art residency program for Moroccan women, Moroccan artists uh, that will be going to Israel um, in, in partnership with uh, Studio Mishlach and in partnership uh, with other international um, actors. And in terms of what's been developed, what's being developed uh, this year and next year um, as part of the Moroccan, um, as part of the Israeli mission to Morocco in Rabat, I'm close uh, with um, the, the members of the mission and specifically with the Chargé d'Affaires of, of, Chargé of Cultural Affairs, Miriam El Malet. And she is personally making sure that more cultural initiatives are being implemented, especially in the spaces of film production and visual arts. Uh, so she's right. overseeing establishing an agency for joint Moroccan-Israeli right. film production. Uh, they're going to be doing a lot more Judaica art exhibitions right. within Morocco in national museums. So not just in spaces that were previously solely or exclusively dedicated right. um, to exhibiting Jewish art, like the Jewish Museum yeah. in Casablanca, but really venturing out on, into other spaces. And and well, I'm, I'm sure, Shaman, there's, um, I'm sure there's going to be much more. And we're going to see many more of the there's fruits so of this, of this, co -op, <laughs> this cooperation in the coming years. Shaman Mishtali, thank you so much for joining us on i24. Thank you for having me. Take care, guys. Bye.